Welcome to Zombocom. I mean, welcome to Two on the Vine with me, Vinny, and me, KY. <laughs> Let me lay it on the line. He had two on the vine. Great. So this is our third podcast, and uh, we're here to talk about some stuff. We've got a lot on the plate today. Mm-hmm. How you doing, KY? I'm doing pretty well. Uh, very excited for PAX, which is coming up. I'm excited for PAX too, but I wanted to talk to you about that. Uh, how is Boston? Um, is is it Hoth still? Is it Hoth from uh, Star Wars? I'll, I'll put it this way. I can actually see, I can start to see the top of my fence again. Uh, just barely. Just peeking out from, you know, on top of the snow. Uh, the, and yes, the top of my uh, fence that's as tall as I am. So, Progress. Yeah. I mean, that's in my backyard. Uh, I actually, we uh, walked and got some... Um, shabu earlier and uh there were like half the sidewalks would just end inexplicably because there would just be a barrier of snow that what whoever in that property decided not to dig out so you know uh it, it's pretty bad yeah I, I, I hear that between train stops it's like a two-hour wait or something stupid like just per stop uh, oh my god i've i've heard it's gonna be pretty rough i, I heard the t train isn't running is that correct uh, it's running now. I mean, well, it's going to be limited. It's, it's weird. I don't know. I don't even know anymore because well, I don't, I don't take the train to work. So in other words, it's going to be really complicated and annoying at PAX. Yep. Um, I'm excited for PAX too, but you know, if it's Hoth then there's Tauntauns going, blah, 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 <laughs> then I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be a little bit dis. um, what's the word disappointed because I want this to be fun. I want everyone to have a good time. And it's like, you know, you go outside and it's just, Oh, I'm going to fade away into some snow for a little while. Regardless, regardless, I'm still excited. And, um, that's one of the things we're going to talk about today. Some of our expectations and, uh, potentially some games we're excited to check out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're also going to talk about, um, uh, maybe the new 3ds a little bit and some Zelda stuff. Um, but you know, what have you been playing? What's new? Uh, let's see. I finished a a couple of puzzle games because I know I talked about this last stream, but I finished both the Talos principle, which is really good. Uh, it's kind of like portal without much of a gimmick, like, cause portal has that main, uh, like portal gimmick where, you know, you solve these puzzles and your main tool are portals. Uh, your main tool is the portal gun. Uh, in Talos principle, it's, it feels very much like portal, but there's no primary, gimmick it's just really really well designed uh puzzles that use a number of different like objects that all have their own properties and functions uh and a surprisingly solid plot like i I wasn't expecting much from the plot and i actually really enjoyed it uh so that was good and then even more importantly i finished infinifactory and holy shit that is probably the best one of the best puzzle games i've ever played hands down um i can't recommend that one enough uh, you should you, you, factory. Yes. Like, did you play Minecraft? I did. Yeah. When it first was a thing, I guess I played a lot of it. So the, the gist of Infinifactory is it's, it's Minecraft based. I mean, it's, it's, it's from the Infina series, which originally it was Infina minor, which is, uh, known as the precursor to Minecraft, like not. Oh yeah. 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 Like he sat down, he played Infina minor and he was like, I want to make this game. That's what Notch sounds like. And, That's right. uh, and he made Minecraft based on his experience with Infiniminer. So it's made by that same guy, except it's a puzzle game, a purely puzzle game. Uh, And little factories output single blocks of different kinds. And then you need to, you need to assemble those blocks using a factory that you build kind of in a Minecraft style. Uh, And uh, you know, there are things that will weld blocks together or rotate blocks and things like that. And you need to bring them to a certain point on the stage. Uh, And it's really good like super good uh, like i would really recommend checking it out okay yeah that sounds cool um really like i said when it comes to puzzle games or any kind of game that makes me think a little bit i like a clever unique concept or just something that works yeah something that you you understand it you get the mechanics of it and then you can just from there the game lets you expand upon those simple like basics into right. this like really really maybe not over overly complicated style of gameplay but one that makes you really think and stretch the limits of the game mechanics right yeah i mean it, it's that really makes good any sense yeah it, it absolutely makes sense i mean what i another one and i guess just one more thing to note about it that i think that 
you will enjoy, you'll say, oh, that sounds fun, is that uh, the, the puzzles aren't really linear in the sense that they're all designed to be solved a specific way. Because you have your beginning inputs, which are whatever blocks you need to make the end solution. And then you have the end solution on the other side of the stage. And then everything between is just a barren wasteland, just blank. And you basically just need to assemble them however you feel works. So there, the puzzles aren't even like like there are so many solutions for every puzzle, like hundreds, you know, right. thousands of solutions that people could use. So uh, it it makes this really good replayable experience because you're trying to make an efficient puzzle. Because not only can you solve it and feel happy that you solved it, but at the end it gives you a little histogram of how efficient your puzzle was, like how many cycles or how how much time your factory takes to assemble whatever it is you need, uh, and it puts that your solution up against your friends numbers so it kind of encourages you to try to go back and and re like rearrange your factory to make it more efficient uh and right. it's very open ended which is probably my favorite part of it whereas talus principle and portal pretty much every puzzle is designed to be solved a very particular way especially talus principle sure yeah I, I think with portal though you you do have a few different ways on some puzzles to approach it but for the most part, it's a pretty linear puzzle game. Right. I think well, that's like probably, yeah, like one intended way or one or two intended ways. You know, especially in sure, Portal yeah. One, you had a, you had a little bit more freedom. Portal Two, like way less freedom. Even though I thought it was a better game overall, um, there just wasn't as much freedom in Portal Two because like a lot of times you'd stare at a wall with like that was all black non-portable panels and a single white panel in the middle. It's like, hmm, where right. should I? Well, what put am my I going to do with this? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but Infinimire is just the opposite end of the that game design philosophy. It's just, here's your inputs, here's what you need to output, go. And you just have your okay. tools and you figure out how to do it. Uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to hook you up somehow and so you can check it out because okay. it's great. It's really good. All right. Uh, what have you been Well, playing? that sounds cool. I I've been playing uh, Castle in the Darkness, All right. which has become very difficult and uh, very challenging. I recommend it if you're looking for old school adventure style action adventure kind of game mm -hmm. um i've been enjoying that i've been playing i've been streaming majora's mask 3d which we'll talk about a little bit later and i've also been playing um monster hunter the new monster hunter uh, 4 ultimate and i've only streamed it once but i've been playing a little bit more than that and i want to say just to kind of start off if you're a monster hunter fan you know what to expect there are improvements there's a lot of new content. There's a ton of new monsters and weapons and all that stuff. And uh, the game is really solid, really refined. It works really well. The new lock-on mechanics and camera controls. Even if you don't have the Circle Pad Pro, even if you don't have the new 3DS's analog nipple, you can still play the game fairly well, and it, it's still fun. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really well-designed game, and it's a lot of fun, and it's addictive. Like, please, God, save me from the addiction. <laughs> it's like yeah. once you once you upgrade your first weapon, I, I found the point the point where it Part gets addictive. Okay, <laughs> and the point where it gets addictive is when you upgrade your first weapon, or you get your first piece of armor. That is when you're stuck with the game, because then it's like, well, now I'm invested in my character, and then you just have to keep collecting bones and and fluid sacks and monster. <laughs> monster testicles and then you basically upgrade your armor your your weapons and you do it all over again and uh -huh. uh, i haven't played the online yet but my initial impressions are very positive and i'm i'm scared <laughs> yeah. because i know how many hours i can lose in a game like this right so that's what i've been playing and i've been playing it on both the streaming 3ds and on the new 3ds and the new 3ds is really good and it's kind of weird because there's a little ir sensor in it and you feel like it's watching you at all times. So, mm -hmm. it's, but yeah, it's, it's yeah, still pretty cool. Weird, huh? Yeah. I mean, so I, there I, you go. I never got into a, I, I never even played a monster hunter game. Now that I think about it, I think I might've like touched one briefly, like uh, picked up the controller, dicked around a little bit or played a demo or something. And then yeah, I played the Wii U demo, like an early, uh, was there one on Wii U before? What? Like three ultimate was the one on the Wii U. Yeah. Yeah. I think I played the demo for that. And it was pretty fun. I like I enjoyed what I did, but there's something about it that doesn't 
want make me want to try it like i don't know it's hard to explain because it's it's one of those games where it's made so that you start with some equipment to kill some monsters so that you can get better equipment so that you can kill better monsters so that you can get better right. equipment and over and over and over and like if, if the game's fun then that's really what matters and i'm sure i would enjoy it but there's nothing that immediately makes me want to get into it you know I don't sure know. Well, well, the learning curve is pretty high. It's it's not something that you can just jump into and immediately be good at. So I get why some people are intimidated by the game. But once you get into it, once you figure it out, once you start hunting with your friends, and each person kind of specializes in their own weapon, uh -huh. then, yeah, it's it's really addictive. And this new one is no exception. I hear it's, the new one is uh, the first game with a plot. Um, I guess there was a plot in... Monster Hunter 3, uh, there was like a loose plot about you have to fight a dragon. Uh, and then this one is a fight <laughs> with the dragon. Um, and then I guess another thing happens. And then a cowboy tells you that you got to join a thing. And uh, that's it. Yeah. And there are talking cats. So I don't know what plot this is that you speak of. Oh, this, maybe. this concept I don't know. is very I'm, strange. I, I could have pulled that out of my ass. Um, or maybe it's just by, no, it's <laughs> by like the standards there, of the previous games or something. I don't know. There's a plot. It's just uh, I'm not playing the game for the plot, you know. So that's <laughs> right. like watching that's like watching Fifty Shades of Grey for the plot. Yeah. By the way, don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of makes me feel like a hypocrite a little bit because, like, there are a lot of games where I'm like, you know, this game is so good that uh, there is a plot, but I don't care about it. I'm just playing it for the game. But then I see something like Monster Hunter, and I'm like, there's no plot. Like, I need some some kind of plot even if it's not the reason i play the game it makes me feel like a hypocrite um i don't know it, it I, just, I understand because like it feels like the it, it's just a weird to have that universe laid out in front of you and to have the people of that universe their entire lives are literally designed around a grind right but then again right. i guess you know that's that's life <laughs> that's so. life yeah in a nutshell i mean then you die but here's the thing about monster hunter there is a plot and there are cut scenes and there is a story to follow uh, and it's there was one in three and there is now uh one in four but i think the one in four might be a little bit more in depth mm -hmm. and uh there's a more character development um however you know i read a little bit of it and i get some of the story and i just think to myself can i kill a monster now right so but I it's mean, it's a great game I mean, because I, I like Dark Souls a lot, and I hear the combat's really similar. Uh, like, you need to learn the tells of the enemies, and uh, I don't know. So I should like I, I it. Have, On paper, I, like I should like it. I like it more like than it. Dark Souls. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it's, it's, for me, it's a more fun experience, and especially, I feel like it's a little bit more forgiving at times, too, because you get to, um, you know, when you hunt, hunt with other people, you get a chance to attack an enemy without being attacked. Mm -hmm. So, and, and basically... Long story short, it's good, it's fun. I don't get as frustrated with this as I did with Dark Souls, and um, highly recommended. So Yeah. Well, I mean, it's weird, because the combat of Dark Souls wasn't what drew me to Dark Souls originally, and wasn't, wasn't one of my favorite things about Dark Souls. Like, to me, I played, at least the way I approached Dark Souls, I kind of played it like a Zelda game. I tried to view it as much as I could like a Zelda game, just trying to explore new areas, like learn some mm -hmm. things about the world. Eventually, I did come to fall in love with the combat and especially the weapon system, which I know that Monster Hunter has in spades. Like, it's pretty much mm -hmm. the same thing as far as I know. But, I mean, again, I don't know much about it's, Monster It's similar Hunter. in some it's ways, very, yeah. It's similar. Um, in that you choose a weapon that you like the feel of rather than just, you know, this one has, you know, 263 attack, but that one has 265 attack, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So... But and I guess Monster Hunter doesn't have that exploration feel. Maybe that's why I don't want to. I don't know. It's not uh, an adventure so much as it is you you go to different areas and, and right. find different monsters. It's a hunting. It's the hunter gatherer experience. The game. I'll, and, have, to, I'll um, have to play it. Yeah. I'll have to give it a proper shot sometime. Because like it's weird. Because if I tried it, I'm sure I would like it. But there's just something that's putting me off from actually trying it. So I'm sure once I try it, I'm gonna enjoy it a lot uh, and probably sure. get terribly addicted. But. Well, this well, is the one. I hate to say it. This new one is the one to start with if you haven't. It, it's really? it's a little bit more user friendly. Yeah. Uh, if I ever get yeah. a, a new a new 3ds, ah, oh. but of course, but of course. Yeah. <laughs> 
so that's the initial i guess that's what we're playing um yeah. but i think we want to do something a little earlier don't we KY. Yeah, I mean, we've been having this segment called Greenlight Guests that we usually do at the end, but now we have listeners' mail to get through. <laughs> so, uh, so we're gonna do listeners' mail at the end, and we're gonna do Greenlight Guests now. Then we'll uh, we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about Zelda and you know new 3ds, maybe a little bit of PAX or whatever. We'll see how time's treating us, and then at okay. the end of the podcast, we will end with listeners' mail. So, all uh, right. Yeah, so tell uh, tell our listeners, for those who are listening for the first time, because there are bound to be some, with every episode, think of it that way, uh, yep. what is Greenlight Guess? You explain. KY hates me. That's mm-hmm. Greenlight Guess. Yeah, or rather our listeners hate you. Well, here's what happens. Uh, KY likes to trick me, and the listeners like to trick me. So here's how they trick me. There's a bunch of Greenlight games mixed in with a bunch of fake Greenlight games that people made up. And I have to guess, based on the description, a very limited description, mind you, which one's real and which one is fake. Um, the thing is, I, I'm not, I get like a 50%, like a slightly over 50% ratio so far <laughs> because some of these are so hard to tell. There's a lot of crap on Greenlight. And, um, well, I guess you'll find out soon enough, Shanshu. 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 All right. You ready? So, uh, so like uh, like many said, they'll either be a fake one made up by viewers or a real one. Just gonna read the description and you tell me if you think it's real or fake. I'm ready. All right. In the kingdom of Ents, you have been framed for plotting to murder the king, your father. Prove your innocence before you are chopped down. Ugh. That sounds insipid enough to be a real green light game. I'm gonna say true. That is fake. Uh, zero for one, my friend. That is that Ugh. was submitted by Drur, and he he dubbed the game Tree Sun. I, I <laughs> Tree Sun. Oh God. <laughs> Tree, oh <laughs> like, like wow. Ants. You know, th- this is really funny because he specifically requested that I save the title for after the guest, and I couldn't figure out why. I stared at. It, I was like Tree Sun, Tree Sun, and I was just like, okay, whatever. Whatever you say. Yeah. And then just now, when you had that laugh, and I, I had the epiphany, and I got it. So. Yeah, Tre- treason. It's it's right. treason, but with a tree. Tree, son. Dr- I yeah. hate you. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. all right, zero for one. Aimlessly explore procedurally generated island with 99 procedurally generated art galleries full of generated artwork and generated sound loop exhibits. Maybe you will find some meaning here. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna say that's real. That is real. You got one. There you go. Yeah. Uh, that what, one. What is that though? It, it's a game called Secret Habitat, and the, this one I cheated slightly, just like how last podcast I had one where I cheated slightly because it was not on green light. Same thing with this is not on green light, but it's on itch.io, which is a website for. Uh, it's kind of a platform for uh, indies where there's some really good stuff and a lot of really terrible stuff out the link. Okay. You. Uh, let me, geez, Skype, come on. Send message. There we go. There it is. It's called Secret Habitat. It actually looks a little interesting. Uh, like, it's like some of these this week, uh, I felt bad because some of these look pretty decent, but the description. It looks, <laughs> it looks good. Just, you know, I want to give a, a picture for the listeners. It looks good, but the description is so terrible. Yeah. But it just the the fact they use the word generated there. I mean, it's got to be self aware, right? To use it that many times, and I then suppose. end with you know maybe you'll find something. I don't know. It, I it's don't know. Be, I don't know. It's got to be self aware. So. I think it's self aware, but yeah, that is a weird description. I, I almost went with fake on that one. So yeah, who knows? All right, All right fair so enough. That, you're one for two. Mega Hive is a 2D side scrolling horror strategy video game. Collect all 10 honeycombs. Watch out for the bees. <laughs> True. That's, that's real. That's real. That is fake. That was submitted by Nolan Boxtar on Twitter. Uh, it Pretty good. They've gotten really good at making these sound believable. That or the Greenlight games have been getting really good at sounding yeah. terrible one way yeah. or the other. But uh, are you ready for another one? Yeah, I'm ready. I just want to comment on that. Sure. That, that sounds like a game. Yeah, I've would... played so many shitty games that that sounds like something I might have played in the past. So <laughs> watch out yeah. for the bees. Yeah, yeah and, it's, it's and Mega hard. Hive. It, it, that, that could be the name. I think the part 
that gives it away for me as a fake game is it says 2D side scrolling horror slash strategy. I mean, you don't know anymore. <laughs> the way things are, it's hard to tell. Yeah, but you're true. right. That that was the giveaway. That for the most part, that one was the giveaway. All right. All right. In the not so distant future past, aging has slowed, but not universally. As men continue to creep toward their own mortality, the women of Aita remain youthful and radiant, resulting in an upheaval of what it means to live in a gendered society. In this Philip K. Dick-inspired dystopia, take on the role of Eve, defender of the last men, an opponent to the ruling misandrists. Welcome to the Clenchin. I don't know what the fuck you just told me, <laughs> but that's fake. That is fake. You are correct. That was submitted by Kazakami. Oh, thank God. So you are two for four Philip again. K yeah, I'd like to consider myself a Philip K. Dick fan. He's written some of my favorite, you know, sci-fi stuff. <laughs> I'm listening to this. I'm like, what? Like this so, is yeah, not. Okay. <laughs> so there Thank you go. Thank God. Luck Slinger is a hip hop infused spaghetti Western action platformer where luck affects the world around you. In Luck Slinger, luck is a collectible resource that can make the player lucky or unlucky, which affects the game world and gameplay. I wish you could see my face right now. Just the face of pure befuddlement and confusion. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say that's real. That is real. Indeed, yeah. you are 345. It is called Lux Slinger. Uh, like the description said, I'm going to link you. And this one was actually the ones that actually piqued my interest that I actually want to try. And there might be a demo on the page. I, f I forget. Uh, but... The idea of having luck as a collectible resource is pretty interesting. I almost left that out of the description because I felt that gave it made it too real because it was just such a genuine, genuinely interesting idea. But the it's, first yeah. sentence, you know, a hip hop infused spaghetti western action platformer, uh, that was pretty funny. That is the honestly when you said that I was immediately a fake. Like yeah. that's when my face started contorting into this weird like, just just not human face anymore. It was just like confusion. <laughs> but I have to say, looking at it, it does look all right. It looks pretty decent. Yeah. So, yeah, who knows? Might be good. Might be good. It's just a yeah. weird concept. Okay. Stupid Survivor is a fast-paced action game where you escape from houses that inexplicably keep catching fire. <laughs> it can't be real. No, it's fake. That is real, indeed. Stupid no! Survivor... <laughs> Is the name of the game where cat where, Why? where Why houses, houses inexplicably catch fire? You are three for but six. But why yeah. do they keep in? Why are they inexplicably <laughs> catching fire though? Well, I mean, think of it this way: Why does anything? Why do house fires happen anyway? I mean, th there is always an explicable reason, but I guess on the surface, it's always inexplicable, right? Like, what the yeah, fuck I made guess. that happen? I guess you're right. Can, yeah. can Can you imagine something in your house setting your house on fire right now? Uh, yeah, about five or six things. <laughs> so, so, never yeah. mind. Yeah, okay. all right, fair enough. So I'm halfway. I'm a half, you know, 50% ratio. Yeah, yeah, that means par for the course so far. Uh, so this one is an excerpt of the description. It's not right at the top, but uh, it's part of it. Instructions. Instructions! Play at the <laughs> highest resolution. This will allow your computer to stop the GUI from distorting. Graphic quality should be set to good because of glitches in the GUI that occur when the quality is set higher. For now, play in a window because we could not figure out how to make a functional exit button. An update will be released as soon as possible. Um, that sounds incompetent enough to be on Greenlight, green light, but here's the thing. There's a $100 entry fee for Greenlight games. Did you know that? Right. That you got to actually pay $100 to get on Greenlight. That, yeah, that's why this segment is so good because some of the shittiest stuff, someone somewhere dropped 100 bucks to be like, you know, put this up. And either they knew it was there. a joke and it's just a really expensive joke or uh, or they actually have faith in it and, and, you know, which one's worse. But what do you that's think? That's why I'm going to say that's fake because you can't spend $100 and not know how to not know how to program an exit button. Fake. That, that sir, is real. It is called <sighs> Death of a Dream. What the hell are these people doing? Yeah. That Why can't they figure out how to do things before they spend $100 and get their games on Greenlight? <sighs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's... I am so angry, but okay. All right. All right. Center. Uh, okay. Uh, let me see. All right. Death of a dream. Yeah, yeah. he's right. It's real. God damn it. <laughs> Super Cisco Brother 65. Play as one no. of two. Fake. Are you sure? 
Yeah, it's fake. You sure you want me to read the whole thing? Please, okay. <laughs> Super <laughs> Super Cisco Brothers 65. Play as one of two tough brothers to save Princess Delink from the dreaded Neator. <laughs> Cisco. Like Super. either <laughs> Captain Cisco from Star Trek or uh, fucking Cisco the rapper. <laughs> thong, the thong, thong, thong. <laughs> oh, no, that's fake, dude. Uh, that is correct. It is fake. That was submitted by TBCR, one of our many loyal viewers. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a good one. Cisco spelled C I S C O. <laughs> Let me see that. Thong, 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 thong. You no, know, it, I it, couldn't. I could, yeah. It, it, I heard that song on the radio or something the other day. I forget where I was. But, you know, it really struck me strange because when it comes down to it, uh, like he's he sings about all these like awesome things he sees in the club, like look at that ass so scandalous, and look in the eyes, and like I'll, I'll, like just uh, describing this woman and how awesome it would be to be with her. And at the end, he's like, "No, I want to see <laughs> the thong. Like that's right. that's all that matters to him. I got to see that thong." You it's, know, I want to point out <laughs> that that song in particular, like when it first came out, I thought to myself. How stupid a concept for a song. Like, how, how dumb know. could you get? Uh, and then 15 years later, here we are, and that's most music that's, like, pop <laughs> and on the radio. It's, yeah. like, insipid. That's the second time I've said that word today, and, and we'll be the last as well. But it really is just this, this pointless, like, stuff that has no meaning. Right. Cisco paved the way, in my <laughs> opinion. Did. And it still gets airplay somewhere. Every once in a while. Uh, one last yeah. thing I want to point out about that entry. Uh, despite its title, Super Cisco Brothers 65 is not the only... Uh, there is a real game on Greenlight that has a 65 in the title in that kind of ironic way. And you might remember it from one of my streams. It's called uh, Burrito Galaxy 65. Right. Yeah, Burrito Galaxy. I yeah. didn't know there was a 65 subtitle to it. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure if it was originally there, if they added it later, but it is in there. And uh, it's also interesting that someone submitted because some of these people some of the green lights that the real ones i've been giving you were also user submitted they said hey you should show this one to Vinny, and maybe he will think it's fake uh but someone submitted burrito galaxy and i was like he's gonna know this because i streamed yeah it. and yeah, second yeah. off it's such a good game i love burrito galaxy but and it was at pax wasn't it last year yeah yeah i, I met the i met the developers at pax one of them was wearing a frog hat uh and that's <laughs> what i remember most distinctly, because we, we very briefly met, but they were really nice guys, and uh, I, I regularly talk to them on Twitter, and they're good people. Cool. Yeah. Next one. His mother was a ninja. Wait, oh, did I, up, did I update that? You said it was fake, right? So I think we're four out of eight. I don't know. Okay. His mother was a ninja. His father was a gun. But now Gun Dad <laughs> has been kidnapped. And it's up to you, Gun Guy, to go out into the world and save Gun Dad. Oh my God, these are hard. This one is hard. Uh, it, it, I think that's fake. That is real. The game is called <laughs> <laughs> the game is called Blaster Shooter Gun Guy, and uh, it gets the, sadly the description gets worse. But it's I don't know. I, I wasn't sure if I should have included it. Let me see the part that I decided not to include. There's a part at the end that's just so blatantly try hard. It says, "I am gun." I R am gun guy. I R have te gun. Everyone, no guy who am have gun, R can save the universe. <sighs> if you read that to me first, or if you also read that to me, I still would have said that was fake. I know. That's why I was I was like, uh, I don't know. I just decided to include the first the intro sentence. Uh, but this is another one of those baffling I can't believe they spent a hundred dollars to get this on green light games because it really does you know what? I can't even say that because I've seen stuff that looks like this and worse on the Xbox Live Indie Arcade. So, you know, the, the downloadable indie games on there that are like a <laughs> dollar. Yeah. This is not any worse than that. So, okay, fair enough. So you're four for nine if I... Yeah, keep, not, not doing good. If I'm keeping tally correctly, probably not, but that's okay. Next one. Normally, most side scroll games are right scroll, but in this game, the character can go both right and left sides. The character can go to the right side, but there is only snow because we do not know what will happen in the future. Also, if you keep going right side, at some point the character will fall down, like there's always end in our lives. 
I hope this isn't real. Um, fake. That is real as well. I'm throwing a lot of reels at you rapid fire just to try to throw you off. Well, uh, you're doing a good job. How the fuck is this a real game? <laughs> it's called... Can you guess? Well, let's see this. If you can redeem go yourself. Go right? It's called go right. Go left as well as right. You're so close. It's called left. Just just plain old left. I had to actually find a Wayback Machine page of this because it's since been removed. But I did find it. And I just linked you to it. Uh, so you can view the wonderful page about, you know, the deep metaphors. You are four for ten. This looks terrible. Okay. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm Like, I hate to be mean about people's work if they want to call it that. But this is. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean. Keep, keep going. Some people, they, you can't put them down. They're making something. Yeah, you know? they're making something. It's something. I mean, it's better than, you know. Yeah. What games have we made? We, I we haven't both made, made game. We both made shitty RPG Maker prototypes. Uh, not That's to say right. RPG Maker games are bad, because I, I should mention a little bit of an aside here. I just finished Lisa. Uh, have you seen right, any and of That's the, an RPG Maker game, right? Yes. And I would, actually, I can feel confident saying that is the best RPG Maker game I've ever played. Like, hands down. Well, I played Off, and that was pretty good. Yeah, and, I hear um, Off of is course, good. Of course, Drunken Paladin's a good one. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, true. I mean, there's a lot of really good ones, but, uh, you know, there's also way more bad ones. Yeah. Um, I hear, too, The Moon is great, too, and I haven't played that yet. Uh, all right, next green light guess. In this Vudeo game... <laughs> Sorry. In this Vudeo game, you <sighs> say play... It, say it without laughing, please. Okay. In this Vudeo game, you play... <laughs> okay, got this, got this. <laughs> okay. How is that spelled? V-U-D-E-O. It's just like they missed the I key. And they didn't yeah, attack. well, to okay. be fair, the U key is right next it to the right I. Next so. to it, right. All right, okay, go, go ahead. In this Vudeo game, you play as Mr. <laughs> is bad and make sad for the world. More sad you make, the more good bad become... <laughs> it's fake. That it's is fake. fake. You got that. That that was yeah. submitted by Epic Pickle, but <laughs> I have seen green light uh, descriptions before where they do just like you know hit the wrong key and they mm. either don't catch it or they just decide not to correct it. Uh, right. So you've seen funny. misspellings in green light <laughs> games. All right. Fair enough. All right. <sighs> okay. Uh, six <laughs> nights at Susie's pimping strategy game an eighteen plus <laughs> mix of Leisure Suit Larry and Five Nights at Freddy's. Six Nights at Susie's. Yep. Now keep um, in mind. I've heard, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. To, uh, go ahead. I just want to say I've heard of a lot of Five Nights at Freddy's clones. Yes. That that's what I was gonna say. There are probably like hundreds of Five Nights at Freddy's clones. Almost to the point where I felt like I shouldn't include these in here, like the real ones and the fake ones. But uh, but what do you think? I'm gonna say that's real because I I have seen so many like clones. That one is fake. Uh, that one was submitted by Grand Zeit, I believe, on Twitter. So, oh, that was fake. That was fake. Yes, indeed. Okay. Uh, five Nights at Bunnies. <laughs> you own Pizza Safety Watch. Watch out for Bunny for a crepe. <laughs> Sorry. Watch out for Bunny <laughs> for a crepe scare. <laughs> <laughs> I can't Wait. do this anymore. I, I know. Okay. Five this Nights at Bunnies. End. You own... <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this. Okay, okay. <laughs> We've gone off the rails. I, I just officially. gotta, I just gotta read it. Just shut off my mind. Five Nights at Bunny's. You own Pizza Safety Watch. Watch out for Bunny for a crepe scare. Pizza poison. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> what? <laughs> How is pizza spelled? <laughs> Take a guess. It, it's pronounced pizza. P i z z e r. It, it's spelled. Both times it's spelled P I Z Z R. <laughs> so the more okay. I read it, the more stupid it fucking looks like. When you see it on paper or on the screen, it just looks so pathetic. And the R is next to. Wait, no, it's not. Uh, I don't even. How, how do I'm going to say it's real because the previous one was fake. It is fake. I hate to okay, say it. I, I threw two fake Five Nights at use. I'm I'm really fucking with the metagame. I really shouldn't do that, but... No, 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 no. It's fine. Here's the deal. Here's the deal, though. This game is so hard 
because <laughs> I've I've heard the most ridiculous concepts be real games. <laughs> so I just at this point, it's it's a crapshoot. Yeah, kind of. So don't I mean, feel bad. Don't feel bad. I think eventually you're gonna get really sensitive to like the tricks that people use when they're constructing the fake ones. Uh, but they're doing a great job. I think they're advancing at the same rate you're advancing. So we'll see. Okay. All right. Welcome to Dig Kill X, an advanced building game with survival element thrown in. In day, build the wonderful creator, but when night is kill the zombie or X's for the item. But not worry, for you have friend to help on quest. Orpho. Orpho is the friend's name? Orpho. Um, like, no, you have friend to help on quest, dot, 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 Orpho. Oh, <laughs> I thought his name was Orpho. <laughs> Orpho. Like your best friend's name is Orpho and he Will helps you. Willem Orpho. Willem <laughs> the Orpho. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, listen, you know, there's so many games out there like that and that sounds kind of boring and, and it, uh, I'm just going to say it's real. Yeah, that one's also fake. Oh, man. That was submitted by Shrek Doge on uh, Twitter. Of course. Of I course. Think. A guy named Shrek Doge would make something like that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I said. But either it was Twitter or through email. One of the two. So, there you go. Uh, next one. Oh, this one after I... Okay. We I is a single-player game. Story starts with a particular situation. Your wife's dying, and you have some personality issues. Your wife's dying, and you have personality issues. That's... The funny thing about this is that's a particular situation. Like, that vague thing. It says... I'll read it again. We I is a single-player game. Story starts with a particular situation. Your wife's dying, and you have some personality issues. <sighs> um, <laughs> There's been three fakes in a row, so I'm going to say that's real. That is real. The game is called We I. Now, this one... <laughs> you have to watch this trailer. You have to watch this trailer. I watch it, it right now. Yeah, I mean, and we can just listen to your reactions. I'll have the link in the description so you guys can All watch right. along. But watch and listen. Make sure your volume's turned up. Kit I'll, says, I'll, I'll play the audio over this. How about that? That way they can hear in the podcast. How are you? Darling God. I have to save her. She's alive. <laughs> and my son. <laughs> I can do it. I have to save her. <laughs> what do we do now? Precious. Now. <laughs> what do we do now? This fucking guy's voice. You murdered her. <laughs> you did nothing for her. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Wait. Hey, wait for the you queue. I'll tell you when it ends. Okay, I'm a little behind you, but. 56 seconds. Alright, I'm That's at 50. That's where it's at. And I'm at 56. Okay. Yeah. Ugh, what? That was like if Tommy Wiseau and Gollum <laughs> had a baby. What the hell is that shit? We, I. And like, the for those that. Uh, I mean, you guys heard it, but for what you couldn't see were the QTEs. Uh, so like when he goes, I have to get to a med kit <laughs> and he approaches the med kit and nothing is happening on screen. He's just staring at the med kit. Meanwhile, like five or six QTEs flash by like rapid fire, like left click Q Y space. Like just <laughs> it doesn't look like any fun. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, but it, it's actually graphically, it's a lot better than, than what you're hearing. So yeah. Yeah. Like it's a competently made trailer with some okay graphics. Uh, it's just that voice. Oh my God. That voice. What will we do to save her? <laughs> <laughs> but oh, uh, sweet Jesus. In this, in this game's defense, it was a game jam game. It was made in 48 hours. So All right. like, obviously that that's clearly like, you know, a programmer voice acting at its yeah, finest. It's, and, and it's like so bad it's good maybe like right. you know, at least it, it made us laugh so like, maybe it made other people laugh and take notice of the game i kind of want to play it i kind of want to try it just to see could be fun all right so uh i the, the, you got that one uh correct so you are six mm -hmm. for 15 i believe uh all right one more okay 
The game is about... <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'll try again. The game mm-hmm. is about a bisexual footbale that travels Theo time and barfs on people to death to save his home planet. Did you say it was a homosexual footbale? Uh, I'll read it again. Please do. <laughs> this game is about a bisexual footbale oh, that travels sorry. Theo time and barfs on people to death barfs to save so- his home planet. I, I that can't be real. I'm sorry, that can't be real. That's fake. <laughs> no. It is. It's real. It is. I'm gonna no. link you right now. The game is called <laughs> No Little The game is called Little well, how about you read it? Go ahead. Go click the link and you read the title to me and, and don't die laughing. Or just don't laugh. That's your challenge. Little head star blanket the movie. <laughs> Little what? head star blanket the movie. Uh, that it's, one has to also be self-aware because when you see the page, it's like so. Someone says um, "awesome title," and then there's a person below that that says "I made the title." <laughs> Those are the only two comments. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, oh, little head star blanket the movie, and then this screenshot where it's like, like something made in paint. Like, like literally, I'm not even just saying that to make a joke. Like, this has to have been made, like, in paint. It has, like, it says, Little Head Star playing the movie in Comic Sans. This, like, little 12-year-old kid's face over a blue, a blue, I don't know, it looks like a magic carpet and a star. Yeah, magic carpet And you could tell that 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 star was, like, you know, the little star draggy thing in paint. I don't know. I don't even know what you call it. This is also, the description is in all caps, and I'd like to read the first part of it. (laughs) <laughs> okay, guys, this is my game. I worked hard on it. Licensed by STYS, approved by the committee, spelled incorrectly, of assholes. Spelled in. That's what it says. Oh, yeah, yeah. With A dollar sign dollar sign <laughs> H0L3S. Fuck off. Consistuid of Jerichi, Mind Nomad, Sasso, and like some other people. This game is about a bisexual foot bale that travels through time and barfs on people to save his to death <laughs> to save his home planet. His home planet was cursed by Maurice's Mario Say Delays. <laughs> to, revert, <laughs> to revert the curse, the boot fail must do what I said before Lel, I'm too lazy to rewrite it. It actually says that. Thank you for Thank reading. Thank you for reading this description and give me money. M-O-N-I. A hundred dollars down. They spent a hundred bucks to get that on green light. So, right? That actually almost makes me mad. Genre action, adventure, strategy, RPG, massively multiplayer, casual simulation, free to play, racing, sports, shooter, platform, a puzzle, arcade, music horror. Hey, you know what? You could spend a hundred plus another, you know, 50 or so on just on the DLC of Evolve. So I guess you could do a whole lot worse. Oh, May man. as well play a joke on Greenlight. They really went overboard with Evolve, didn't they? Uh, yeah, they, they kind of ruined that, huh? Yeah. Like, it looked kind of interesting when I first heard about it, and now I just have no interest. Uh, well, I'm let's, sure it's um, decent. You know, I'm sure it's good. Well, anyway, yeah. I, let's just do this. Let's finish um, the segment. I want to say I hate you. I hate our viewers, and uh, rather our listeners, for sending in these um, things. I hate um, <laughs> everyone on Greenlight. I hate you all. Um, I hate... Um, anyone that misspells something like foot bail um, because you're making me lose at this game <laughs> and there is no way in hell I'm ever going to get my record back of uh, a positive success ratio. This game sucks. I hate you. I hate everyone. Um, and I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you were uh, my tally. I don't think is right, but it was six for 16. You're definitely under 50 percent there, uh, which is your worst score yet. <laughs> so good game yeah all right let's jump into a topic okay, uh, because well, i really did want to talk about evolve for a minute sure uh before we do oh. really quick if you want to submit for green light guests just so you don't need to wait to the end of the episode to hear this shit uh if you want to submit which i i recommend submitting fake ones i i can find the real ones pretty well uh but uh submit your fake green light suggestions to at Live by FOMA, L I V E B Y F O M A. Do not send them to at two on the vine because then Vinny might see them and be spoiled, and that wouldn't be any fun. Right. So yeah, tweet me and hashtag Greenlight Guess. You don't even have to tweet me; you just use hashtag Greenlight Guess, and I'll find it. Okay. Cool. There you go. There you go. So, 
Um, I hope you guys do send in some good ones, though. I, I'm kidding. I don't hate anyone, uh, but I do. I, I do kind of hate green light now. <laughs> so there's at least that. But you know what? Send in <laughs> your best ones. I like this game so much that I don't even care if I lose. It's so uh, have at it. Have at it. Stump me. Yeah. All right. So listen, evolve. We need to talk for a moment about this. I don't want to get too in depth on this topic, but really, it comes down to this cool concept for a game mm -hmm. made by people who made great game mm -hmm. with Left 4 Dead. Mm -hmm. Looks good, graphically, good mm -hmm. concept, um, cool monsters, party of people with different abilities that fight the monsters. Great. So far you have me. A cool trailer. Um, and then like over $100 of DLC, huh. some of which is not even included in the season pass. And then I just give no fucks anymore. I don't care. Any I don't know what the game is like, but I am so angry about the decision, day one DLC, that I, I don't want to know. I, I do know this, though, however. I, I've heard people say that the game lacks depth and that you play it for a few hours and it's like Titanfall where you play it for a few hours. You experience all the different classes, you have a little bit of fun with it, and then you're done. You're, mm -hmm. like, there's not a lot of reason to go back to it, right. except maybe the day one DLC. But I don't want that. Um, so therefore, I am not getting this game. And on my interest, same as yours, as a result, has waned to the point of n no interest, z yeah, zero, complete. None. Yeah, no, I, zilch. I have very little to add to that. That, that echoes my sentiment pretty much perfectly. I mean, here's, here's something that I just don't get. Like, do you feel that DLC is just, in general, is getting to a point where... A lot of people are just irritated period at dlc like it's no longer a thing that a company can announce uh on purely positive terms like because there are mm. so many games that have like ridiculously early dlc or a dlc that was clearly planned for the game and then they just segmented off you know they they, they just chopped it off and called it dlc to make a few extra bucks uh do you do you ever do you ever feel like it's starting to venture into a negative connotation for for the consumers Yes, I, I feel like the word, uh, the just the combinations. Was what, what it an acronym? You call it an acronym, I DLC, suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, just the when I hear DLC, I, I feel the bile rise a little bit because of how, um, the, not even, you know, the the nature of DLC can be harmless, but just the the arguments that you know happen and like yeah. you know people people get vitriolic about it and angry, and even if. You know the DLC is is fine, and there is DLC that I've had no problem with. Just hearing about DLC gives me agita. So, mm -hmm. basically, I feel it's it's pretty negative, yeah. But they're obviously still making money from it, so they're going to continue to do it as long as they make money, as long as people buy it. Um, I'll tell you what DLC I did like. I got the season pass for Hyrule Warriors, and there were some pretty substantial updates. Um, that kept me busy with the game throughout the months that ensued after release. Um, and that was pretty good. I enjoyed that. Mario Kart had good DLC. Um, and, you know, that's about it. Uh, there's a few other ones. I just give me, uh, do you have any examples of, of decent DLC that you actually purchased and you enjoyed? Um, Yes, uh, Grand Theft Auto 4's DLC was very good. I don't even know if you call them DLC though. Like there were like talking, many expansions. Yeah, like like the Battle of Gay Tony in particular was just on point. Uh, it felt like it felt like they've finally gotten Grand Theft Auto 4 to feel like a Grand Theft Auto game. After, because I mean, I didn't play Lost and Damned, um, and there was another one, wasn't there? Wasn't there a third one? Lost and Damned, Battle of Gay Tony, maybe not. I think it was just those two. Yeah. Okay. Well. I really liked Battle of the Gay Tony. I thought it was great. Um, and so that one felt good. But you're right. It kind of, it's more like an expansion. I was going to say that I've, I, I miss expansions. And like, there have been a couple of games to kind of bring that back a little bit, like FTL, uh, which yeah. one of the best expansions I've played and I can't even remember. Yep. Uh, that's how an expansion should be to me. Like fundamental changes or additions to the original game that uh complement it perfectly and that's kind of what what ftl's expansion was like and that was a free expansion holy shit like we're, we're talking paid dlc 
and how shitty a lot of paid DLC is. And then there's FTL that does, there's a, what are they called? Subset Games puts out FTL Advanced Edition, which is a free expansion, and it's the way expansion should be. They could have charged 10 bucks for that expansion, and I would have gladly paid it because FTL is fucking amazing, and they did a great job with that expansion content. They, ugh, they're just so good. Like, I know. And, and and yeah, they did it for the, the customer that, you know, the, the customers they already had. And they're yep. just like, here, you know what? If we release this, um, maybe more people will buy it because our customers that like the game will then talk about it and people will stream it. So we'll just not charge people for this. Amazing. And, and that's, um, it really is incredible. Yeah. The, and I imagine they did see a huge sales spike. Like I'm sure, I don't, I don't know if it would compete with it, it almost certainly can't, can't compete with paid DLC for a popular franchise. Like, I hear that the Dark Souls 2 DLC is very good. I haven't played it yet. Uh, I might get it eventually, especially if it's in, like, some kind of pack. Uh, but I hear that's really good. So, um, But, like, we're, I'm talking... Uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. Like, I guess Evolve. I mean, it comes back to Evolve. Like, who would... Yeah. Who would buy all that? I mean... On day one, too, right? Because it's not yeah. just about eventually buying a little bit of DLC, $10 here, $10 there. You're getting 100 and something dollars worth of stuff. You know, you can choose what you want, true, but there's so much of it. You're getting an incomplete game, and then you have to, you know, pay more to get the rest of it. Fuck off. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Um, I'll give you some a few more examples. Um, Dragonborn for Skyrim. And a few other uh, Skyrim DLCs were pretty good. Little substantial kind of add-ons. Um, different areas to explore. A lot of new content and affordable for the most mm -hmm. part. So that's... And, and over time, too. Like, you know, two months later, you get this one. Another two months, you get this one. Another two months, you get this one. Great. Um, Borderlands, love it or hate it. Uh, there was a, too much DLC, in my opinion. But some of it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. added some extra life to the game, gave you a chance to get some new items. Um, and that's, again, not day one stuff, but stuff that you do want to come, um, get eventually. Fire right. Emblem on uh, the 3DS had good DLC. Um, tons of maps, a lot of packs. And finally, Undead Nightmare for Red Dead Redemption is generally agreed to be one of the best DLC packs. You could call it an expansion, but I think it was, you know, it, you could buy it on its own too. It was so substantial that there was actually, and I have the game case for it, mm -hmm. <laughs> that you can get Undead Nightmare on its own. And that is good DLC. Yeah, so, and Far Cry there, it, it the exists. same thing with uh, Blood Dragon, how you could just Blood buy Dragon. independently of, of Far Cry 3, and that was good. Do you, how badly do you want a Blood Dragon type game for Far Cry 4? Oof. I would love it. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, that's that's how I feel about that. Um, so, you know, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's, I'm giving a lot of vitriol today. I apologize. I mean, and it's, it's also mind boggling in the sense that they had to, have, they have to have that philosophy, like the marketing team behind that or the publisher, because let's face it, it's probably a publisher decision, not a developing development team decision there to yeah. have so much, but they had, they, at some point they got in their heads that this is good marketing, that people right. are going to see hundreds of dollars of DLC and be like, this is the best game ever. You know, right. like there's Rush so much money I can now. spend. I can spend it here. Uh, I mean, <laughs> fuck off. At, at what point do they, th it's like they didn't even think it through, you know, to me, at no, least. it's not about it's not about customer you know satisfaction with with day one hundred dollar DLC packs. It's not about you know let's let's get our audience and and be you know uh, le like um, for example uh, CD Projekt Red. It, for them, it's all about the consumer. It's all about what can we give away for free. Oh, I don't mm -hmm. know, sixteen DLC packs for which are which are three. Um, Take it. You know, <laughs> let's treat our people good so that yeah. we get brand loyalty. We have people that that love us and and buy our products. And as long as we keep putting out good stuff, people will buy it. And then there's the complete opposite side of the spectrum, which is Evolve DLC, which is basically, um, you know, someone shitting in the punch bowl. And <laughs> they want you to drink more punch. And the thing is, you'll do it for a little while, and some people will always drink the shit punch. Always. <laughs> and they'll make their money from that. And then lose a lot more people because, you know, let's face it, most people don't want to drink shit. Yet, they think that the people that drink all the shit punch because they're not really right in the head. 
those people <laughs> will be completely, completely like on board for anything and they'll just make their money. You know, they'll keep making their money. So whether or not it's a, a financially st- uh, sound in, you know, thing to do in the long term, I'm not sure. Only the publishers and developers have those figures. So I, I can't tell you if $150 day one DLC will eventually be profitable. But I think brand loyalty, treating your customer right, I think that goes a lot further. Well, so I mean, don't shit in the punch bowl. <laughs> I mean, it's almost certainly going to be profitable, right? Because with that much DLC, there's no way that that much DLC was developed as DLC. Like, chances are a lot of that was just made and then they. To have one hundred dollars of DLC or whatever it is, a lot of that had to have just been declared as DLC for no extra effort on their part, other than a price tag, right? Mm-hmm. And not not only that, but I don't know, because you said the game was underwhelming. Uh, I mean, this is this is a little bit um, far. That's what I've heard. I don't I don't know. I haven't played. I can't say for sure. Right. So I, I don't want to be quoted it, on that one. It, it might be far fetched to say, but it's also there's a very, very, very mild possibility that maybe they knew that the game wasn't that good. You know, like they realized it wasn't going to meet expectations, and they just said, you know, let's just crank out a shit ton of DLC, and hopefully make, cut our losses. Hopefully, yeah. yeah I don't know. I I I, I doubt that. I, I don't see that. I think I see it more as just really misguided marketing decision. But uh, but you never oh. know. Just a possible. Just a possibility. <laughs> I've, I'm sorry. I've infected people with that word. <laughs> I, I've actually begun to say it uh, involuntarily. I think I said it at work today once and uh, hope no one noticed. So, Hey, Luigi. Do you think there's a possibility that we can go for some spaghetti soon? But uh, Mario. Know, Mario. Maybe we can do it. <laughs> but Mario, we eat spaghetti all day. But Luigi, I need a possibility of some pizza. Stop I saying that know. word, Mario. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> I like to drink shit punch, Luigi. Mario! Shit punch. Mario! <laughs> hey, that's not too bad, actually. You're not too bad at doing the Ouija. Yeah, you think so? I think it's a Pretty little bit too panicked, but I gotta work. I, well, I you know, you gotta panic a little bit if you woo you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. And sometimes so, I can do an okay Mario, but if you put me on the spot. Here, here, no. give me something to say as Mario, and I'll try. And I'll pro- I'm gonna fail it, but. You know, we'll give it a shot. Luigi, why did you have to make the football? Or Luigi, why did you make the football? Okay. Luigi, why did you... No, see, I can't do it if I'm on the spot. Luigi, why did you make the football? Why did you make the football? Why did you make the football, Luigi? It's a football. Uh, we... I chiseled it. I chiseled it. <laughs> and here we are talking about other people <laughs> drinking the shit punch. I think we're the ones drinking the yeah, shit there punch. there you go. Uh-oh. All right, new topic. Let's let's talk about. Um, I want to talk about uh, some of the, the the new 3DS stuff sure. um, into Majora's Mask 3D for yeah, just maybe yeah. a few 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 minutes, very quickly, um, and then maybe we'll cover some other stuff. But for now, I want to discuss the new 3DS. I did buy it because I don't like money, and I was like, "Hey, Nintendo, could you hold this for me?" So that happened. Um, do I need it? No, I don't need it. I had the old 3DS XL. So now I have three 3DSs in my possession because I'm a glutton for punishment. (laughs) I'm going to sell my old 3DS XL. So at least there's that. Oh. Anyway. How much? uh, Well, we'll talk after stream, but I would like an XL at some point. Well, you see now, I am a man (laughs) of business and I have decided that I will sell it for no less than $170. Mm. But there will be a Vinnie Von Saw signature underneath of it. (laughs) Uh, so if you want that, that can only go up in value, good sir. And a certificate of authenticity. Uh-huh. Scribbled in crayon. Came from the real Vinny Vine Sauce. He played with it <laughs> while on the toilet uh, many the times. Toilet. <laughs> yeah. There may be some particles, but <laughs> never mind. Don't make me no never mind. You, you know that they do say that, like when you enter a, a bathroom, like a public bathroom, how like there there are always some shitheads who are like, you know, you don't really have to wash your hands in the bathroom. I didn't even touch my dick. I didn't even touch the toilet. Uh, right. But it, but what you just said is actually correct in that when you go into a bathroom area like that, there are actually like particles of, of feces and mm-hmm. and uh, like just floating the in flush. the air all yeah. over the place. And, uh, guys, wash your hands. Like wash your hands. Wash your hands. If you take Wear anything away from this mask. podcast, besides you know, in Vudeo game, <laughs> you play as Mister Bad. If uh, just wash your hands. 
wash your hands and also wear a gas mask and a uh, hazard suit. You, you, you definitely want to go into the bathroom with a hazmat suit with a zipper on the underside so you can poop out of it and then yeah. zipper it right back up um, and then you're good. Then that's that you're safe from the yeah. particles. So there's, yeah. So, so I, I, okay. I need to ask, how does the nipple feel? You know what I'm talking about on the, oh, the 3DS. God, it's, so, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's actually, um, I got to say, it works for camera manipulation. Mm-hmm. In Monster Hunter, it's very good. But if I had to play a first-person shooter with it, I would probably get angry. Ah, uh, okay. This is going to come across as very sexual, <laughs> and it's going to sound filthy. I was going to ask how stiff it was, so, I mean... That's you, the you... thing. I can't say this without it sounding filthy, so I'm just going to say it, okay? Do it, yeah. I'm going to try to do this in the most mature way possible. Yeah. The nipple is hard. <laughs> so... What I mean by that is this little analog stick on the right side of the 3DS, which is to focus as a secondary um, analog stick, it is a little bit tough to manipulate. And therefore, I couldn't... It's not very comfortable for extended use. It's good for... <laughs> it's good for <laughs> manipulating the camera in Monster Hunter. Um, and it works. It's, it's perfectly, you know, it's perfectly good for that. And it's, it's pretty nice. But... Like I said, if I had to use it constantly in a first-person shooter or something, uh -huh. I would probably get very aggravated because it is, it's is—it's hard. You don't get the feedback. You don't get, like, when you use the analog stick, you know where you're, you're, you are. You know, if you move it up, you feel it go up. With right. this, you just have to put the pressure on it and hope, you know, that it does what you do. And your thumb starts to get tired. So, it's, so it's, it's, it's more it's, like a, one of those touch knobs on a, on a laptop, you know, where it doesn't actually move. You just it just detects pressure. Correct, correct. Okay. It's more like that. Um, it's not terrible, but it's not ideal. Hmm. Okay. The fact that it's small and out of the way is very nice. However, I would have sacrificed the buttons having been lowered a little bit in order to get a legit analog pad. So gotcha. that's my feelings. Um, the new 3DS, it feels good. It looks good. It's very sexy. It's very sleek. Are the pixels um, smaller than they were on the XL? Because I know the XL, like the you can see the pixels, right? Pretty like much more clearly, I feel, than you could on uh, the original 3DS. But um, yeah, I'm turning it on right now, and I have to say, if I look closely, I still see the space between the pixels. But it's but not. Is it any better? Slight. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Hmm. Um, auto brightness is the devil. Turn it off. You'll be playing a game, and then it'll auto bright, and it'll be super low. You'll be like, "What am I looking at?" <laughs> so yeah. turn that off. Um, the motion tracking for your eyes, so that it it has the it fixes the three D. All right. It works mostly, but every now and then it flickers, and it like detects your eye like moving, and you'll get like a weird little kind of thing going. But it's rare. I don't know how to explain it better than that. Sorry. It's rare, but mostly it works well, and you can look at it from multiple view angles, and you can still see the 3D. It does as advertised. Yeah. I mean, I hear they're going to fix that in the new Nintendo 3DS XLI Plus. So, <sighs> so then it won't be an issue. God, Nintendo, stop. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm just... I'm not want to say shocked, because I'm not really shocked, but I'm just... I do like a little mental face palm whenever I think of the name new 3DS, like new Nintendo. Stop with the new. Okay, we get it. The things you put out are new when you put them out. It is not a, <laughs> it's not a time safe choice for naming anything. Because after a year, it's not new anymore. God damn it. Even worse when they use it for, like, uh, Yoshi's New Island, which was so not new, you know? Yeah. Like, there was very little new about that game, except, I guess, that it wasn't as good <laughs> as the original Yoshi's Island. They introduced mediocrity. That was new, I guess. Yeah, that's that's new. Yeah. They, they took out whatever made Yoshi's Island special and yeah. introduced mediocrity. You know, both of us are very negative yeah. today. I don't know. Well, I mean, it, some things. Sometimes you need to be a little negative because yeah. consumers, you know, we're we're still, guys, you know, listener. I want to address you directly. Just because KY and I stream and you know do videos and stuff, we're still buying this stuff. Yep. You know, ninety percent of the time, I'm buying my own games. I am 
you know, putting cold, hard cash into this hobby that I love so much. And I'm really, at, at times, I'm getting a little sick of buying a, a new Yoshi's Island game and then it's shit, you know, or I don't like it because here's $150 worth of DLC, for example, right out the gate. So, I mean, yeah, you got to get a little angry if you want things to, to work out, you know, and, and you, you know, if you don't want to waste your money on shit. Right. I wasted my money on this new 3DS. The little features that it has that I like are cool. And I, I think it's a nice little system. It looks mm -hmm. cool and it fixes some of the problems with the previous one. But I am um, exactly what I said I wouldn't be. And I, I am a glutton for punishment. I bought this thing and I clearly didn't need it. Um, are you, so, well, let, I'll put it this way. Are you glad that you got it? Do you, do you, like, clearly it's not perfect, but do you regret getting it this early? Okay. No, I don't. I don't regret it overall because I know I, I can sell my old one and um, someone else can enjoy that. So in a way, I don't mind. And also, I like to be able to give my impressions on stuff. Mm -hmm. And I do like Nintendo's new hardware. I, I, I do enjoy genuinely picking up a new piece of hardware from Nintendo. Um, it's fun. So I, I don't regret it 100%, but a little bit, you know, I don't Just need a little it. Bit. It yeah. does load games quicker. And, you know, the textures in Monster Hunter look nicer. Um, and, and there's a few other little things that I like. And I know there's going to be some exclusives for it. However, however, um, 200 bucks is pretty steep. Yeah. So I would say, uh, just as a, a message to anyone out there, if you have an XL and you're happy with it, don't waste 200 It's not Wait that, a while. It's not as new as its name implies. <laughs> no. Yeah. There you go. Uh, but um, it does have Majora's yeah. Mask, which uh, which uh, I'm very glad a new another new generation of gamers is getting to experience because uh, it's one of my favorite Zeldas. I think design wise, they did they did the most interesting things with that Zelda compared to the others when it comes to game design because they already had the engine built from Ocarina of Time. They could focus 100 percent, almost 100 percent of their efforts just in making an interesting game. Uh, but how, do you think it's it's held up? When was the last time you played Majora's Mask before the new one? About before? 14 years ago. Wow. So you haven't, no, you haven't played, played it, it since... Sorry, go ahead. I know, I've played it bits. I've played like the first dungeon up to the first dungeon um, maybe like five years ago. Uh -huh. And uh, I've played it, you know, I've corrupted it. So I've had moments where I've got a chance to experience a little bit of it. Right. I haven't played it in full in about 14 years. Wow. Would you say since launch of that game? Has it been that long? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I played it once or uh, twice in that time, but... Well, um, I have to say the new improvements on it are great, and I'm enjoying it very much, mm -hmm. and it looks looks fantastic. Uh, Grezzo and Nintendo did a great job at updating the antiquated N64 graphics into something a little bit better. Yeah. For example, there's like forests that feel like forests and they're not just like little, little like, you know, protrusions of spiky tree <laughs> things. So yeah. it's good. It, it's nice. The bomber's notebook has been improved. Um, you know, it's just um, the mask system is still great. Mm. Everything that was great about the game is still great, but little improvements here and there, they retooled the save system, which makes it amazing for on the go play. Um, they retooled the song of double time so you can now warp to whatever time uh, you need to. Yes. Which makes side quests a lot easier. And as a streamer, I'm grateful for that. Can you warp I don't wanna... backwards in time when you're doing that or no. just forward? Okay. Well, you can go back to the first day, then warp forward. So there's that at right. least. Okay. I think yeah, it's so. great. I love what they've done with it. Um, and I'm excited to learn more and see more. And there's two fishing ponds. So now there's fishing in the game. Yeah. Um, Overall, I've um, you know I've been streaming it. So whoever here is watching the streams, I hope you're enjoying them. I'm up to uh, the the second, the Snowhead area. Mm -hmm. um, I just got the Goron mask, and um, you know, I will echo your sentiment. I am so happy that a new generation of gamers will get to experience what I consider to be one of the best games ever made, and one of the best Zelda games ever made. Mm -hmm. So. Now, Great. I'm so happy with it. That's awesome. I mean, I'm excited to try it at some point. Uh, I don't own it yet, but eventually. Uh, so confirm or deny. The yeah. Bomber's Notebook 
is on par with Fee from Skyward Sword. <laughs> Deny. Good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that was my main concern is it's something I heard, but, you know, people tend to exaggerate every little thing when a new game comes out. So I, I was like, eh, well, not, first off, nothing could be as bad as Fee was. Uh, right. I really, and for for those listening at home, I really love Skyward Sword a lot. Like, a, a lot of people talk shit on it these days. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite Zeldas. Uh, my favorite Zeldas, I would say... I can't pick one above the rest right now, but I'd say it's a three-way tie between A Link to the Past, Majora's Mask, and Skyward Sword. Uh, okay. I really I really love Skyward Sword a lot, but f- the worst part of Skyward Sword for me was Fee. Just constantly it, uh, Nagging. Yeah. It was so bad because like a lot of the things she had to say were so, were too obvious. Yeah, like it That's was the real issue. It, it it was it was it was bad for a number of reasons. Like one, it was too frequent. Uh Two, it would waste my time. Like, it did not respect the player's time at all. Because, like, well, I guess the frequency is part of that. Uh, three, it didn't respect the player's intelligence. Or, like, you know, it didn't respect the player's ability to try things and try to figure things out. Like, if you struggled for a second, Fee would be there and be like, Master, there's a 27% chance that you're that you're a Nimrod. And uh, yeah. you've got to go this way instead. Or I don't just like just everything that I know, I, and I wanted to like Fee c- as a character because it was something that was kind of unique from Zelda, and uh, and uniqueness is good. I'm, I, I like it when when uh, studios take risks, especially for uh, old series like that. But they have sure. to do it well, and uh, and Fee well. just pissed me off so much. Uh, you know, uh, Majora's Mask, I would say, is what you just described done right taking a risk for an old series and making it interesting and and doing something new with the idea and it's like being able to you know have a feature that doesn't insult the gamer's intelligence Mm -hmm. but also is helpful that's a tough balance um the bomber's notebook pops up when you talk to people and it gives you like a little reminder and it says well you know you could check this out later and it does Trust me, it holds your hand a little bit, mm-hmm. but because of the the so, there's so many side quests right. in Majora, so I don't mind it, especially as a streamer, because I I want to, you know, get to the good stuff. I want to, you know, I don't mind waiting a little bit, but I definitely want to get to the good stuff for the sake of the viewer, mm-hmm. and uh, I love what they did with it, and you know, I think um, you have this this whole concept of the, the rewinding time like a Groundhog Day kind of concept. And, and there's actually an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation and there's an episode of The X-Files that has the same same concept where you go back, um, they go back to the beginning of the first day and mm-hmm. then events happen maybe a little bit differently and then they go back again. So I love that concept. It's a really good one. And it was done so beautifully with Majora's Mask, topped off with the amazing end of the world scenario I mean, the atmosphere in this game is just unparalleled. So well done and, and so incredible. And um, experiencing it again with my big boy brain, my, my semi-adult brain 15 years, 14 years later is a treat. And mm-hmm. the game holds up so well. Um, they definitely made the bosses a little bit. I've only done one boss, but they made them easier. Right. And they've uh, done, they changed right. his mechanics a bit. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, purists might complain, but I think overall... The game is well well made. It's a good remake, and uh, I'm super excited to continue playing it. Good, yeah. I mean, I've been I watched a little bit, uh, and I do like the graphical update. I mean, it was pretty much it was on par with what they did with Ocarina of Time uh, 3D, which is slightly Im- slightly improved in some areas, like really? little things you might notice. Yeah, but mostly, yeah, it's it's mostly on par. Yeah, yeah. I mean, which I didn't mean in a negative way at all. I think they did. I think Ocarina of Time 3D was one of those games that was a re a remaster. I don't even know if you want to call it a remaster or remake, but it, it was it was that done right. At least as Correct. an example of one of those done right. Like I can name a few. Like right now I'm playing Oddworld, uh, Abe's Odyssey. Which did you ever play Abe's Odyssey? Not as, not in full. As a, as a pla- as a fan of platformers and a fan of PlayStation One games, I don't know if you'd call yourself 
a fan of PlayStation 1. I was, I was I, definitely a big PS1 fan, yeah. You should, at some point, try an Oddworld game, maybe like the original Abe's Odyssey uh, at some point. I know that pretty much everyone owns the Oddbox on Steam without even realizing it somehow, uh, but uh, it's, it's dirt cheap if you don't. It's like five bucks. I, you might even be able to get it separately for like... Because the Oddbox is a combination of a bunch of those Oddworld games, or at least two of them. Uh, you oh, okay. might even just be able to get the first for a couple of books. You should play that just to just to see, because I think you'd like it. But the they they did a total like, from the ground up remake of Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, and that is fantastic. Uh, that's another example I think of a remaster done or a remake done absolutely right. Um, and you've know. been streaming that, and 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 you you said you're really enjoying it, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I'm you know me, I'm very nitpicky. I, I I'm very critical of uh, of the stuff that I play. Even even the stuff I like, I'm very critical about just because it's the way I think of stuff. But uh, but yes, overall, I think they did a fantastic job. Um, I'm very impressed, very very impressed. But uh, I don't know what it, what what comes to mind when you think of remastered done right. Are there is there anything besides the Ocarina and Majora's 3D, or um, those, would those be it? No, the, the, there's there's probably a few more. Um, Wind Waker was re-released on the the Wii U, mm-hmm. and that was um, you know just an HD. It wasn't really much more than that. Just a few little things fixed. HD remaster. I thought that was done pretty well. Right. Um, what else? <laughs> you know, it's tough to think about this right now because I can't really. I'm drawing a blank, but I know there's got to be more than that. Uh huh. Um, do you have any other examples or, or no? Um, uh, the, well, there's the, the Grim Fandango, but I don't, I don't think that would be an example just because it's pretty much a port more than anything. Like it has some remastered, uh, models and some new lighting effects and stuff. But for the most part, it was just a, a way to get Grim Fandango playable by people again. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, okay. Fair but, enough. Uh, I mean, that one is just on my mind because I'm playing it. Uh, no, not really. I'm sure I'll think of a million as soon as I stop recording. Oh, yeah. As soon as we're done, we'll be yeah. like, oh, oh yeah. there's this and this and this. Oh, Metal Gear. I mean, I haven't played uh, a lot of them, but a lot of people seem to really like the Metal Gear stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, that was um, re-released, the HD editions. Right. So that's something. Oh, Black Mesa. It was free. Yeah, Black, the mod for Half Life. That's the one of the best things ever made, and it's modded by people like, like us. <laughs> people like so, we yeah. can do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else is there? I guess that's all that I'm, I'm thinking of now, but I'm sure there's plenty more. Mm-hmm. Probably. Yeah. Uh, you want to do some listeners' mail? Yeah, let's get to mail. Sure. Uh, at some point, we, since... we didn't talk about packs actually, but let's do that at the end. We'll do that at the end. Uh, oh, yeah, because I guess this would be our only chance to do that before PAX actually happens. Um, no, we'll do PAX now. We'll t- let's talk about PAX a little bit. Uh, so is there anything you're looking forward to seeing at PAX, or what are your what are your feelings about PAX right now? Nope, I'm good. Let's uh, let's just get there and have fun. No, I, I don't <laughs> have any I don't have any expectations. I know it's going to be fun to just, you know, meet people and, and hang out. Um, I am excited for Behemoth. Oh, uh, yes. I want to see game number four and i guess that's really honestly at the moment that's the big one for me i want to see what robot loves kitty is up to um but mostly i want to see what's going on with game number four from behemoth yeah and they're they're actually i think they're having i'm not sure if this is press only or if it's just their booth period but from like 9 a.m to 10 a.m they're having a breakfast at their booth so oh yeah probably not going to happen because you know we both like to sleep uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm too lazy for that, but maybe one year. <laughs> yeah, for those, I mean, we've told this story on stream a few times, but you, you met a certain person from uh, Behemoth, didn't you? I met Tom Fulp, <laughs> and yeah, I didn't know it was him at first, and I tried to get free shit from him. You were, you were like, did you have a name on Newgrounds? <laughs> yeah, basically. I was like, listen, Tom, I got Vine Sauce people here, and we were wondering if you have any pins you were about to throw away or whatever. And um, I didn't say Tom because I didn't know it was him. <laughs> but eventually I was like, wait a minute. You know, were you on Newgrounds too? And then he was like, yeah, I created I'm Tom Fulp. And I, I told him about my past on Newgrounds and we, we talked for a bit. 
dude looks young. He he looked like he was like eighteen or something. Fountain of youth discovered. Yeah. yeah, I want to say he's in his like mid thirties or something right he now. He is. But, but uh, but yeah, that was really cool meeting Tom. This year, I'm I'm looking forward to meeting possibly some other people, and um, I want to let you guys know if anyone wants to stop by the ScreenWave booth, mm -hmm. where, wherever that will be. Um, ScreenWave is the name of my YouTube network, and um, we'll be over there at some point. So, and I know I'll have prints and buttons and free kazoo's and stuff. Yeah. Um, so there's going to be some stuff over at the ScreenWave booth. If you want to find us at some point. Um, just follow me on Twitter, Vinny Vine Sauce, at Vinny Vine Sauce, and I will post updates periodically about where I will be during PAX. And if you want to get a free kazoo and a PAX button from me, that's where you can do it. You just have to find me. Um, but yeah, the ScreenWave booth, that's where I'll be at some point. <laughs> yeah, That's well, all I, mean, I can say for now. Yeah, watch the Twitters. You know, we'll, yeah, we'll tweet about it and stuff. Those. Exactly. Um, let's see. I... I'm looking forward to game four, just like you said, because it looks... Have you watched, like, the gameplay stuff from that? Like, the gameplay nope. trailers? No. Do you know anything about it? Nope. <laughs> Dude, there's, there's like, a full-on... There have been gameplay demos. There's, well, the initial trailer, which I assume you've seen. Like, the, the, the announcement trailer, which didn't really show much of anything other than Stamper, you know, being Stamper. Which, which oh, is okay. You know what? I have seen a little bit of this now that I've Googled it. Um, yeah, the, the, where it's kind of like, you know, there's a hex grid and it's kind of kind of fire emblem me. Uh, I think it looks great. I'm excited to try it. Uh, so there's yeah, it does look really cool. There's game four. Uh, there's a game called Armacrog, which is a, a sequel or a successor, I should say, to The Neverhood, which was an old uh, point and click adventure game made entirely out of clay. Uh, which I was a backer of their Kickstarter, and uh, they're going to have Armacrog at PAX, so that's exciting. That was a game I played, or the Neverhood I grew up with. It was one of those games I watched my dad play when I was really little and eventually played myself. Um, so I'm excited to see Armacrog. Um, I, I'm hope nah, I, I, I was really hoping The Witness would be there, but I don't think it's going to be. Okay, I'll, I'll yeah. have to look into it. And, uh uh, shit, I'm really tired right now. I can't even think of anything else. Like I said, the it's second okay. the second that podcast is done, I'm gonna think of a million things. But those are the two that come to mind: Game Four and Armor Krog. It's not okay. like last year, which had like Mugenics and yeah. uh, and Darkest Dungeon and and like a lot of things and Below. Oh, yeah. Oh, if a Below, lot of those... yeah, Below. If Below is at PAX again, then I actually want to play it this time because I didn't get to play it last year. So yeah, and I want to see more from. I want to see more of. Um... Oh God! Drawing a blank. What's the game? We interviewed the guy, Chasm. <laughs> uh, James Petruzzi. What's the, you know, we interviewed the guy. You know, James Petruzzi. Hey, yeah, we interviewed the <laughs> I, guy. I, I will always remember his name because that was the name of uh, my best friend in high school when I lived in Chicago. His name was James Petruzzi. So when I when I saw <laughs> you interview James, I was like, oh shit, James Petruzzi. And, you know, so um, whenever he, I'll always remember that guy's yeah. name. So I, I don't even, I've not done any, I've even talked to him or been friendly with him in any way. So, but I know his but name. You'll always remember his name. I'll always remember his name. I want to see chasm. Yeah. I mean, that's basically, we're drawing blanks, but at the end of the day, we're just looking forward to the experience. We're just going to look around, see what's there and have some fun. And, um, I hope you guys come see us and, you know, by the next podcast, you'll actually have some impressions. We'll talk about our experience. So next Two on the Vine will be um, more pack centric, I think. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll probably spend probably the whole time just talking about what we saw. Yeah, uh, and you know. Um, also, right. uh, a remake. I just want to mention a few quick remakes. I thought of uh, Kirby's Superstar, oh, yeah. uh, Resident Evil was a good remake, and Metroid Zero Mission. Those are some. Oh, good, ones. good, good Zero Mission. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go. have even thought of that. That's a great one, though. Really good. Yep. Yeah. All so, right. is it time for mail? It is time for mail. Okay. Let, let me do the jingle. All right. Oh, chimpanzee that. Viewer mail. <laughs> Did you I have the one say planned? Listener mail. Viewer mail. No, it's, dude, it's too late. Shit. It's viewer mail now. You guys are watching. Oh. You didn't even realize. Well, I mean, we have our YouTubers that are that literally, literally are watching. A but, picture. A non-moving picture. picture. <laughs> 
I'm going to sneak something in there one of these days, just like one frame of a cock, like in Fight Club or something. <laughs> Uh, Do Captain Picard. That's even better. I, yeah. I put Picard. My last three videos have had a hidden Picard in them. Can you find them all? Ooh. Ooh. All right. Listener mail. The first one is from uh, William3000. I have a question for Vinny. From previous streams, you've said that you won't do horror games on Steam. Is it because horror games don't seem to scare you? They don't scare me very much, and they're a little bit formulaic for my tastes. And jump scares are cheap. And uh, I haven't really found too many horror games that really... I, I don't get scared by horror movies, and I don't get scared by horror games very easily. It takes a lot. So, yeah, it's just not as interesting. And I'm not going to go out there and pretend to be scared by something if I'm not. So that's kind of the reason why. There you go. This one is from Robin. How do you feel about maintaining the integrity of a game while streaming? Do you feel it should be con you should be consistently commentating on a game, or should you let the game speak for itself from time to time? I'm a member of certain sections of Lisa, for example. All in all, how do you balance the experience of the video game as a video versus the experience of a video game being streamed with a host? So, um, I guess I'll field Maybe, this one. Yeah, first. you should start um, that one. I mean, it, it. I mean, this sounds like a cop out answer, but it really just depends on the game, because some games demand immersion or demand attention, and you can't be commentating over it, or it kind of ruins it. Like, uh, like parts of Lisa, or um, or I don't even know. I'm too fucking tired right now. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, sorry, man. But uh, but some games demand that kind of just like you know just play it just enjoy it let the game speak for itself and lisa's a good one uh but on the other hand too i'm a very i'm a very design-minded person like you'll see this if you ever watch my streams i'm very interested in mechanics i'm interested in game design i'm interested in what why the developers do what they do and put things in and do things a certain way and i and i talk about it too i'm like oh i kind of see what they did here they did this because blah 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 and i'll you know talk for 10 minutes about the stupidest little thing but i am interested in game design so i try to i try to commentate in that regard too i try to explain what i think about the design of certain things i'm playing and to me that at least for certain crowds that's that's interesting, and I don't want that to stop uh, for the sake of always maintaining integrity of a game and, and letting every game speak for itself. So, I mean, it just, it just depends on the game, plain and simple. I mean, that's how I balance it. I just make a judgment based on what I'm playing and what's okay. going on. I agree with that. That's a good question and a good answer. Um, I'm pretty much in the same boat. Sometimes I like to um, make the game more interesting during like a dull moment mm -hmm. i'll start telling stories i'll start talking about the game design but mostly i like to during the duller moments i like to entertain um maybe you know do something interesting for the audience whether it be like a, a, a dumb story or just like joke around about s dumb scenarios in the game you know like maybe characters that make no sense and i'll make like little backstories for them um so for me i, I like to entertain i like to make people laugh so sometimes it's hard to shut me up uh, during a game, but then there are times when I will just play the game, I will be quiet, and I will let the game unfold. RPGs are a good example. I usually shut the fuck up, let the game do the talking for itself, and, uh, you know, just enjoy the music, enjoy the sights, enjoy the story, and, um, you know, keep it a more low-key stream. So the answer is, it depends, but I feel that there can be too much. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know when to stop talking and you don't know when to let the game speak for itself, you can actually, you know, kind of be a detriment. You know, the thing about being a streamer is you don't always have to entertain. This isn't radio. You have a visual aid. You know, you, you can let some things breathe a little bit and you can not talk for about 20 seconds, 30 seconds. And that's totally acceptable. So some people feel like they have to keep talking over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that kind of can ruin things. So yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah. Uh, this one is from knife keeper one. Hello. KY and Vinny, big fan of both. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Uh, my Thanks. question is, do you prefer good gameplay or story? I've had a lot of conversations about how I don't like the game with bad gameplay, but good story, and people often don't agree. That is the reason I didn't really like The Last of Us or The Walking Dead, which in my opinion is just an interactive story because of lack of gameplay. If the gameplay is good, but there is no story, you can have fun. But going through a boring game just to see one more cutscene or dialogue is just not good. Will we be... 
we'll, we'll be glad to hear your opinions on the subject. I have a simple answer to start with. Mm -hmm. Again, depends on the game. <laughs> that, that's a good catch-all for a lot of these situations. Because, I mean, let's face it, gaming is a really, really diverse media. Like, I mean, because, like, in movies, it's much more about a story. Like, there are some art movies like uh, Koyanikatsi. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's basically no. just, it's just, like, two hours of... Uh, of videos, small clips of things either in super fast motion or super slow motion over the soundtrack of Philip Glass. Mm. Uh, and it's good. It's a good piece of art. But for the most part, almost all, you know, almost all movies are about a story of some kind. Uh, with games, there's still a tendency. Like, I feel like most games are more about a game. Uh, but especially in recent years, stories have come to the forefront. Now we're seeing a lot of games that really are just about the story and uh, like The Last of Us Walking Dead. It depends on the game and, and uh, it's with gaming being so diverse, it just depends on your tastes. There's definitely nothing wrong with you at all for, for really anyone for having the opinions that they have. Uh, as long as they've, you know, unless they misrepresent someone or they haven't done the research or, you know, whatever. But sure. Uh, but I understand why you wouldn't like The Last of Us or The Walking Dead. Um, I I like a lot of different kinds of games. Some games I do just play for the gameplay, like Darkest Dungeon is an example. I, I couldn't even tell you the plot of that. <laughs> Same. It, but I love it because it, the mechanics are good, they're deep, and it's just fun. Uh, some games I don't even care about fun. Some games I play for a different kind of reward. Uh, some games I do just play for the story and the gameplay just doesn't matter too much to me. It, it really, it just depends on the game and gaming's diverse. Yep. Um, I'll just go ahead and add, I like the Walking Dead game. I like the Game of Thrones game by Telltale because they were interesting story-wise. Uh, Gameplay-wise, there's not anything really there. So it's just story, you know, and then the choices that you make keep it mm -hmm. interesting. Um, but mostly I play, I like gameplay. You know, I like to have some fun when I'm playing a game like I'm playing Monster Hunter more or less ignoring whatever story might be there yeah you know just playing it for fun and yeah. uh, I yeah. prefer that so if I had to choose one or the other definitively I would choose gameplay mm -hmm. however I like a good story and one of my favorite games in the world is Chrono Trigger I like it because of the complete package of music and visuals and and of course the story is is great and yeah. the character development is great. So, yeah, I mean, it depends, really. It just depends. Yep. If I had to choose one or the other, I would also choose gameplay. Uh, game mm -hmm. design and and uh, how the game makes me feel while I'm playing it uh, is matters to me more, and I get more enjoyment out of than a really good story. But I do like a good story. Yeah. So uh, this is from Rubber Chuck. I love the podcast already. I've been watching Vine Sauce for about a year. Keep up the good work. Quick question. Would you rather play only on consoles for the rest of your life or only on PC for the rest of your life? Good question. Um, I would say PC simply due to it, it feels more. Um, it feels more. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not elastic, but I'm going to use the word elastic because why not? It feels more elastic because it, it's because um, you can do games and you can see mod like you can do modded games and you play online with people. It's just it, it's more flexible. It's more uh, for, there's more variety on a PC than a console to me. I would choose PC because it, it is like KY said. There's so many types of games on Steam, and like he said, also modding games. Um, the online is obviously there's a lot of different experiences that you can have online on the PC and some console games, they're kind of more limited. Mm -hmm. Um, the only games I would really miss are like more just Nintendo stuff. Yeah, like I would miss, right. I would miss being able to play Majora's Mask. Uh, I mean, if, you know, I'm not, let's not talk, let's say emulators are, are not a thing. Right. Yeah. So just PC games or console games. I would miss a lot of Nintendo stuff. I would miss Monster Hunter. And, um, you know, stuff like that. However, you know, overall, I think there's just more variety on a PC and uh, I would prefer that. Yeah. Um, yep. I agree. Uh, Luke asks, how long have each of you been streaming and how did you get started? I guess I'll start. Um, five years about, um, I've been streaming since about May of 2010 and that was the beginning of Vine Sauce pretty much. Mm -hmm. my first stream I ever did was the first Vinesaw stream 
Um, I got started because sometimes I just get compelled to do things, like odd, oddly compelled. Yeah. And it was like a thought which turned into like a dream I had one night. And I was like, you know what? I should do that. I should stream some Chrono Trigger. Streaming I'm knowledgeable. Easy. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm knowledgeable about the game. Maybe some people would like it. And I just, um, I did it. And I eventually things worked out and it's been fun. And KY joined maybe a few months after that. Uh, not even uh, just in, in June, I believe. Like so like a July. month later. Yeah, yeah, it was like a month later. Yeah. But you were streaming also, a little bit before then, right? Uh, I just had I just had the, my uh, my modulus because it wasn't live stream yet. It was modulus. Uh, I had my modulus account uh, created, but I'd never streamed. So my first stream was also in Vine Sauce, or well, that's not totally true. It was on my own channel as an off stream Vine Sauce because back then Vine Sauce consisted of about five viewers. Not even <laughs> exaggerating. And uh, yep. Jen finished streaming. She was like, "Does anyone want to stream anywhere? We'll we'll go watch you." And so we went to my channel and I streamed Mother 3. And Jen was like, you know, you're a pretty good streamer. Uh, would you like to stream on Vine Sauce? And I was like, sure. And she was like, okay, I'll talk to Vinny. I hadn't even talked to Vinny or met Vinny yet. Uh, so then uh, Vinny gave me access to Vine Sauce channel and and that was it. I streamed on Vine Sauce. I continued that same Mother 3 campaign. And it was just one month after Vinny started Vine Sauce. So. Mm -hmm. right, right place, right time, I guess, but it, it's worked right out. Right place, right time. And, yeah. and yeah, we became pretty close friends. We have a lot in common and we tend to, I, I'd say there's, there's a lot of, um, we, we, we tend to understand each other pretty well because we don't like bullshit. Mm -hmm. And when we hang out, it's pretty just free of bullshit, you know? So we're just, we get along well and he's a good streamer and, you know, it's just, it's, I'm glad that it worked out the way it did. I'm glad that it was just like out of nowhere. Here's this guy, KY, who's going to stream with us because uh, it, it was a, a good, ha it was a happy accident. Yeah. And I remember like something like July or August uh, was, uh, I don't know, we became friends really quick too, aside from Vine Sauce. Because I remember like a month or so after I joined, you were like, you know, you should come up to New York and we should hang out. And I was like, sure. Because like we got along when we did talk on stream and yeah. the rest was history. Like, it was meant to be. He's my butt buddy. And oh, boy. I wouldn't exchange him for anything. Meh. <laughs> All right. Uh, Coniglio asks, first off, do you guys have any sort of schedule or dates to expect new podcasts, or is it just when you guys feel like it's a good time? Uh, we, we strive to do every every other week biweekly, but uh, other if that fails like we're just too busy then it's when we feel like it's a good time this is kind of a side project of ours we're not taking it too seriously putting a lot of work into it but not you know going crazy on it uh but roughly every two weeks yeah um, yeah second question why are streams so late at night i love watching them but i keep missing them uh, uh i've i've answered this a few times but i can say I, I like streaming before bed like i like to finish a stream and then watch an episode of a TV show, then go go to bed. It's like he a has, little he habit. He has his milk, his warm milk, <sighs> and then I pat him on the back until he burps, and then I lay him down on his back because if he lays down on the front, he could get SIDS. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, there's no, like, I, I just stream, I'm a, I'm a night owl, and uh, I usually do my stuff during, you know, the evening and the day, and then I just tend to start streaming late because it's a good way to cap off my night. Um, I, I try to stream a little earlier from time to time, uh, but you know, my videos are all, all of the streams are on my, my channel, the full sauce channel. So if you miss them, you could watch them there. And I apologize for streaming so damn late. Yeah. I, I don't stream as late as you, especially since, you know, I have a job that requires me to get up stupidly early. So, but, um, but still at night, I guess. Uh, but if you do miss my streams, I, upload the full streams of the ones that really matter to my channel like the big campaigns and the most interesting stuff because i do a lot of like bullshit one-offs too it's probably less of that up i don't know mm. um all right uh let's see tbcr asks uh for both of us uh what is the most obscure game we have played either on vine sauce or before you go first because i do not have an answer <laughs> I listen, man, I play tons of weird shit. Um, yeah. you know, if you've seen any of my shovelware game, uh, play things, you might, you might've seen some obscure stuff. Um, 
you know, Revenge of the Sunfish. I, I streamed oh, recently. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, that's not even obscure by any means. But yeah, I, I listen, I do a lot of really, really weird streams. And, uh, you know, you can find them on the full sauce. Like just recently, I'll give you an example. So aside from, sorry about the crackles. <laughs> this is uh, an ongoing issue, as you know, if you watch my streams. But aside from Revenge of the Sunfish, I just tend to do like really bizarre games, maybe like once a week. And um, recently I did um, a game called Live by the Sword. Um, it's awful. It's a horrible game made by the people that did Undead Rider. So there's another one, Undead Rider, um, and stuff like that. Just weird, odd things. Yeah. So I've got a few obscure ones. Like I recently did a demo for the next game by the guy who played Papers, Please. Uh, did you ever play Papers, Please? No. Oh, that's good really good but um it's called return of the obra din uh which is a game where you're on board a ship and you see there are skeletons all around the ship and when you you have a, a magic pocket watch uh that <laughs> that when you press the button over a skeleton it brings you back to the moment they died like a freeze frame of the moment they died and you can like inspect the situation and what the ship was like during that moment and you do this at every skeleton and then you have a log book and what you need to do is determine how each person each ship each person on the ship died like then the only thing in the logbook are names so you need to gather their names based on the conversations you hear during that moment of their death uh or because you hear a little bit of snippet of dialogue and then you see the moment uh and it's really smart like really uh really interesting because okay. you kind of deduce it's like a murder mystery almost and you kind of deduce who was which shipmate like that what each person's name was and how they died and there's like a huge list of different ways they could possibly die that you need to determine uh, and it's pretty cool it's pretty cool uh so okay. that's the first one that comes to mind um another uh, one I, anodyne yeah anodyne yeah that's that's well i yeah 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 it, it's a less obscure but uh but yeah that one, one came to mind i'll give you guys um one more pr uh if you there's a thing called prosperity path I did mm. Fear and Lust. It's this bizarre like meditation type game where you go <laughs> through and you lose your fears and your lust. It's really weird. Anyway, it's on Full Sauce. It's on the YouTube channel. Just type Vinny Prosperity Path. You should find it. You want to talk about fucking obscure? There you go. Those are the two most obscure things I probably ever played. Yeah. Um, all right. What's, uh, this comes from Jamie. What's your opinion on the new Nintendo YouTube partnership deal? Yeah, I, sh I assume you know all about it. Yeah, it's it's a bunch of fucking shite. Okay. It, it, that's that's really it. Uh, let's just, okay, I'll give you a quick reason why it's shite. Because Nintendo will own your content, and it takes them three days to approve your channel. And it's basically them throwing peanuts at you for you promoting them. Now, of course, a YouTuber would have a different perspective on this issue than a regular old you know, viewer of the video, YouTube videos. So a lot of YouTubers that I'm aware of, a lot of YouTubers that stream and play Nintendo games are not happy with this deal. And I definitely fall in that category. I think it's stupid and I will not be taking advantage of it. As much as I love Nintendo, they do some really fucking stupid shit sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, how I feel. Sakoto asks, uh, the first question is for both of you. Excuse me. If you could change any shitty video game mechanic and redesign it to something better, what would that be? I had a really good answer for that, and I forgot it. Uh, so I'm going to pull a different answer from uh, something I mentioned earlier in the stream. I would remove Fee from Skyward Sword. Oh, there you go. Instantly, the game would be like three times better. <laughs> That's okay. how much I really didn't like Fee. Uh, so yeah, I would I would remove Fee from Skyward Sword. I, I had a better answer. I'll think of it sometime when I'm not recording. But, I'd like uh, to apologize again for the crackles. It's okay. It's very, very minor. Uh, what, what would you change? A, a shitty video game mechanic? Um. Oh God, you know, I had. I know there was some stuff. I definitely have had some talks about this on my streams, but I can't remember right now. I'm sorry. That's okay. I I, I can't think of a single one right now. Hey, if you think of any, let me know, and uh, we'll come okay. back to it. Uh, the second question, also from Sakoto, is for Vinny. Vinny, have you ever been interested in voice acting gigs? I'm actually needing a voice actor for something I'm doing soon, so I'm just wondering if you'd voice act and <laughs> stuff. 
I've already I've already refused his request. Um, yeah, I, I, I yeah, this is I've already told him no. The reason I say no is because a lot of people do contact me and they say, Hey Vin, can you do a quick thing on my project or my game? I've done a few, but honestly I would prefer not to because then it just starts to turn into, you know, like everyone starts bugging me. So no offense, Sakoto. I'm sorry I can't do your your gig. Unless um, they can pay you. I mean uh, you shouldn't. I'm do pretty work, lazy. Work like that for free, I guess. I don't know. It depends on how big the project is, um, yeah. and also too. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely consider voice acting. I would love to. I, I think it's probably what I've done. What voice acting I've done has been really fun. Um, yeah, I would like to, but I want to find the right gigs and and maybe get some notoriety uh, doing something that has like a bit of a following. I mean, I've, I'm projecting very far into the future, and I know I'm probably not even good enough to do something like that. But if the opportunity arose where I got a chance to do something very interesting like that, I would do it. Yeah. And, you, you know, of course, like KY said, sometimes the pay has got to be right. Otherwise, you're just spending hours doing this thing and you're not, you know, getting a re result or a reward from it. So, and Benny, I made a game. For my for my Q basic class uh, in this video game, you play as Mister Is Bad and make sad for the world. <laughs> will, will you voice act? I can't pay you. I no, I'm not uh, doing that one. But I'm doing a game called Super Hatman, oh, Super Super Hatmeng. Super Hatmeng. And, you mean and Super Cisco Brothers sixty five? Check that ass like a scandalous. <laughs> yeah, Looking at that one. Daphne. Uh, all right, uh, you Drazo. My question is for KY. Have you heard of a game? Have you heard of or played Runers? It's a mildly Isaac-like RPG. It makes you combine different thingies and modify your attack. Uh, what's your opinion? I need to hear the opinion of my guru before I drop bills on it. Uh, yes, I've played Runers. I've, I played the demo, so and it's free. So if you really need your opinion, just download the demo, and then you'll know. Uh, I thought it was pretty fun. Basically, like uh, there's like six or seven elements, and you can combine them either two or three at a time to make different attacks, which you know results in thousands of different types of attacks. Overall, it's a pretty fun game. A little rough, but I enjoyed it. Hmm. Uh, Joe Hickey asks, Vinny, with how the Vine Sauce community and members have grown and spread, what do you think the future of Vine Sauce would be? Will it be a dystopia of people living under the soft and depressed hands of Sponge, or will it be an entity that, you can, that could be understood by internet slash video game savvy people? Listen, comrade. I have no plan to turn uh, Vine Sauce into some kind of dictatorship. However, I decide, I decide if we all work together, no money, everyone work together for common good, we accomplish great things. And, you know, two hours to get bread on a line. I feel like Vine Sauce being spread out is, um, is such a minor thing and, and people overestimate how... You know, it's like you just press a button and there's the streamer. You know, you, you, you could just go to vinesauce.com and click one button and whoever you want is there. Um, it's uh, it's I, really... Well, sorry to interrupt. I don't think he meant like in regards to the site changes. I think when he says when it's mem community and members have grown and spread, I just think he meant like the influence has spread. Oh. Like as as the stream's gotten bigger, how, how will things change? I think that's what he meant, but... It's late for me. It's late for me too. Um, if you mean what KY is saying, then I can say that um, I don't really want to be a community manager. Um, but I, what I want to do is I want to show people cool games and I want to stream and I want to have other streamers that do the same. And uh, I, you know, it's going to get harder to communicate with the audience on an individual level if the site keeps growing and if my streams keep growing, for example. But that's the same for just about anything. You know, any streamer, any YouTuber, anyone that gets more and more popular, it's harder to um, talk to people. What do I want from Vine Sauce in the future? I don't know, just this. Whatever this is that we have, I like this. And maybe at some point there could be some kind of, um, you know, some, some kind of news stuff that happens. I don't know. Maybe I'll cover some more events. But I don't, I'm lazy. I like what we have. I like streaming. I like making a video every now and then. And um, that's really all I got for you. Sorry. I don't really have much more of an answer. It's okay. Uh, this is also from Joe Hickey. Uh, only three more questions, by the way. Uh, okay. He asked me, 
do you have any time do you in any time plan on doing your own video game what genre would be when how would it play a uh, very good question um i've i've dabbled in a little bit of programming nothing like noteworthy in the least uh i don't know if i had to make a video game maybe it would be a metroidvania because i think that would be fun to design uh and yeah it, kind of an action metroidvania be about mm -hmm. it'd be about a kitten on a spaceship uh full of like horrific aliens but fedoras you know, <laughs> fedoras it, it'd be full of horrific aliens and the kitten of course is a stupid fucking cat and doesn't doesn't discern that these are horrific aliens and just thinks it's you know it's just a fun place to explore and meanwhile, this kitten is finding ways to slaughter and destroy the fuck out of the space station, totally oblivious to what it's doing. Because it thinks it's just, you know, chasing lasers and shit. It's just a <laughs> stupid cat. Uh, like, it thinks it sees, like, a scratching post when really that's how it climbs walls. Like, you know, as every Metroidvania needs powers. It gets, mm -hmm. you know. Um, all of its powers would just be stupid cat shit. And... <laughs> As the game progresses, the cat gets more and more mobile and more and more destructive and crazy. But no matter what, it's just always because it's a stupid fucking cat and it doesn't know better. And eventually, like, the ship will explode or something. Okay. Next that question. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, mine, mine would be something to do with corruption and, like, the corruptions kind of taking over the world. Maybe, like, a Zelda 2 style game. I've had plenty of game comps game concepts i've discussed them while live but i would say something that is um a bit zelda 2 a bit um castlevania something like castle in the darkness but you fight corruption then the game glitches as you go along there there's a puzzle game that's kind of similar to that called corrupt um which it starts off as just a, like a fairly simple block pushing puzzle game but then eventually the world starts to corrupt and you need to like you need to manipulate the corrupt parts of the world to like to warp to parts that you couldn't access before. It gets pretty interesting. Um, mm. And just on one more note on that, uh, I forget. Did you play Anodyne? Yes, just a little bit though. The, the never, very, never finished it. The post game gives you this power to basically swap any tile on the screen with any other tile on the screen which sounds really simple, but you can use it to like get outside the boundaries of the game. And the developer actually hid stuff outside the boundaries. Uh, it's really interesting post-game. Uh, you basically like corrupt the tiles in order to travel out of the boundaries of the world where there's actually stuff that he also put. <laughs> so, interesting. Yeah. Okay, it, it, that sounds cool. kind of cool. I might check that out. It, it's good, but it's just the post-game. One of the coolest post-games I've ever seen. Uh, but All right, two more questions. Ian yeah. Vidya asks, as the name of this email implies, this is a story uh, with a question that is related. One of my classes, I had a strange substitute. She overreacted about everything, especially when people said anything that could be rude, even as a joke. Like some said jokingly, I hate you, man. She would look at them and say, uh, and she would look at them and yell, saying that is like saying you want to kill him. Apologize now. One time she went, went up to a girl uh, who had the word yearbook written on her arm and told her that it reminds her of Auschwitz. Uh, other classes have told me stories that we're talking, et cetera, et cetera. My question to you, what is the weirdest experience you've ever had with a teacher? You what? What is the strangest? <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a, some bizarre stories there. Uh, listen, I've had some weird experiences where teachers have flipped out and left the classroom. Um, but I've also, you know, you, you come to learn that, that teachers are people. You know, they're not really these like sentient overlords that are there to impart their wisdom upon us. They're just doing their job. They're there to teach. Some of them are more passionate than others. Some of them have personality flaws and, you know, some are very, very scared people. And, you know, you can really say that almost anyone has an experience with a teacher that could be really, really nasty and weird. Um, for me, I can't really, you know, I know this. I know that there was a teacher that we had in grade school who would um, teach our grade history. So she was one grade ahead of us. And my class was so bad that she actually filed for a transfer to an earlier grade because she didn't want to handle us because we were rough. Hmm. And um, it wasn't, you know, I wasn't really that bad. And a lot of my friends weren't that bad. But our, our class as a whole was rough. 
So, I mean, yeah, it's, I don't really have any specific stories that I can think of right now. Um, but that's, yeah, that's something. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, oh, and, uh, mine, I'll, I'll keep it brief, but I had a teacher in high school, my first French teacher, uh, who was like kind of strangely passively racist. Like, uh, it's kind of hard to explain. I don't even know if racist is the right term. Maybe she was just trying to be inclusive, but backfiring. But, like, uh, she would, like, for example, she used to joke around with kids with, like, our class and be like, haha, I'm going to take you all home for dinner and we're going to eat this and this and that. Uh, and like, you know, just like as a joke and whatever. And then she would turn to me and be like, and we're going to have some of our favorite Jewish food there too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was like, are you, are you serious right now? Uh, uh... Yeah, and or, or like Christmas time would come, and she was to be like, "Here's how you say these things in uh, in French," and like, "Here's how you say Merry Christmas." Then she would turn to me and be like, "Here's how you say Happy Hanukkah." Here's how you say I want to eat matzah. Uh, like, I was just like, "Are you are you serious right now?" It's, it's like, a little odd. Yeah, so that was weird. Um, yeah, I, and apparently my sister in third grade. Uh, this goes back again to being Jewish, uh, but. My sister in third grade, her teacher actually got fired for this, but she she was having the kids draw a snowman, and she told my sister she couldn't draw a snowman because she was Jewish. What the fuck? Yeah, she she was just like, well, you don't celebrate Christmas. You can't draw a snowman. I mean, first off, it's a snowman. It's not, you know, Santa Claus or something, which would right. still be totally fucked up if she wanted to draw Santa Claus. Let her draw fucking Santa Claus. Who yeah, what shit. the hell? But, but yeah, she would do that. But uh, that, amongst many other things, got that teacher fired. Like, apparently, like, if kids were out of line, like, like lining up at the door, she would, like, hit them. Uh, oh. Stuff like that, but... Uh, so well, this, this sounds pretty bad, okay. Yeah, this is gonna um, be a very negative note to end the episode on. Uh, yeah, last yeah. question. Uh, Gavino asks, what is your guys' favorite game of all time slash most hype game, and what should I watch on Netflix slash what is your favorite Star Trek episode? So uh, would you like to answer any of that? <laughs> um, Chrono Trigger and Super Metroid are pretty much tied for favorite. Um, yeah. Uh, most hype at the moment is Monster Hunter 4. Um, Star Trek episode uh, from Star Trek TNG Next Generation I would say, um, oh man, there's so many good ones. I'll give you a few. There's one called Remember Me. There's one called Parallels and Remember Best me. of Both Worlds <laughs> and um, uh, Darmok and The Inner Light. Those are five really good ones. And Netflix, I would recommend The X-Files because I'm watching that right now and I'm really loving it. Yeah, good one. Uh, my yeah. favorite games of all time. I can't choose one. I'm going to choose three. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 3. Spelunky and Okami. I would say those are my favorite games of all time. Uh, my most hyped game right now is The Witness. Uh, it's the first one that comes to mind. I can't think of any others that I'm hyped more for now that Rebirth is out. Uh, what shows should you watch on Netflix? If you like comedies, I recommend Arrested Development. Uh, start from season one. Uh, X-Files, like Vinny said, would be great. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't really watch Star Trek. So I okay. can't recommend you a Star Trek episode. And that concludes Viewer no, Mail. No, not yet. Oh, wait. Well, no? well, it doesn't conclude the podcast. I want to just say I got um, a package today from someone from the stream. And oh, it yeah. was very lovely. A bunch of shovelware was in it. And some <laughs> other weird stuff, like a, My Little Pony armband. Um, there was really? also a Minnie Mouse um, fan, a bow tie, and some other very strange things, like a demon head. And um, a gum, gum, guys, uh, trident layers with real <laughs> fruit flavor, watermelon plus tropical fruit. As I open it, I notice that one piece is missing. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> so thank you <laughs> to Autumn for sending me this package. It's wonderful. The shovelware looks amazing. And thank you for the gum. I hope you enjoyed the first piece. There you go. Awesome. I like it. Uh, if someone wants to send us viewer mail in the future, how would they do that, Minnie? I don't know the address, but you could email us. You could email us at uh, Vine two. Uh, two on the Vinecast at gmail dot com. Two is a number two, as in at the top of your keyboard. Two on the Vinecast dot uh, at gmail dot com. You do have to put the cast there because two on the Vine was taken. <sighs> mm. um, or you could tweet us 
at two on the vine again the number two on the vine or uh, our personal twitter is at live by foma or at vinnie vine sauce any of there those would do uh yep. but yeah just the podcast email podcast twitter is probably the best uh same thing green light guest hashtag green light guest tweet at live by foma um anything else i am officially done forever <laughs> okay no well, i i'm done for the night i'm ready to go so that's all I got. I uh, appreciate you guys listening. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, we'll see you guys. We'll talk to you guys in roughly two weeks about our experience with PAX. And of, it as might always, be a little more than two weeks, but, um, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. You're right. Yeah. I guess it will be. Oh, so, well, well, we'll see you when we see you. So, yeah. And we'll see you on stream too. All right. See you all guys right. later. Bye. Bye. Let me lay it on the line. He had two on the vine. 